Welcome to our video on population pyramids. As we study the population units, population pyramids are a very important component of this section. So let's go ahead and start taking a look at what a population pyramid is. Let's go ahead and break down one of these population pyramids. When we take a look at the graphic, the first thing to take note of is that if we spin the graphic, you will see that we basically just have a bar graph. And that's what a population pyramid is. It's two bar graphs bumped up against each other. Now looking at it in the uh, normal fashion, across the bottom is our population. The wider that bar, the more the population is, the higher the population. Up and down the middle, we're going to see age groups. These are called cohorts. So that we have a 0 to 4 cohort, a 5 to 9 cohort, and so on. So each bar is telling you what percent of the population is in that cohort. The most important thing about a population pyramid is the crude birth rate, is how many people are being born. Because it's not death rate, because we have to see if you're born first, so our birth rate is the most important thing. Finally, males are on the left, females are on the right. And this is easy to remember because, as a lot of us guys have learned, females are always right. Gentlemen, just kind of go with that. So again, here's our population pyramid, and you can see that the wider the base, the more children you have, the narrower the top, the less older people you have. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a population pyramid for stage one of the demographic transition model. When we take a look at one of these graphs, we can see that it has a very wide base and a very narrow top. So it has high birth rates and high death rates. These are developing countries. Technically, there are no countries left in stage one of the demographic transition model, but this graph comes close to seeing what we would see in that scenario. At the bottom, many young dependents. At the top, few elderly. You don't live to be very old in countries like this. And in the middle, we have a very steep slope of the worker age. What this means is that we have a lot of dependents and not a lot of older people to take care of these dependents. So that worker age is missing. So there's a lot of children for a lot of working people. And that's why we see a lot of poverty in countries like this. So let's take a look at a population pyramid for stage two of the demographic transition model. Here we have a wide base and narrow top still, but we are starting to see a little bit of an increase in the older people. We still have a high level of children, but the middle is starting to widen. We're starting to get people to live the older ages. So those worker cohorts are widening. And this means we're going to have more people to take care of the dependents, more workers to take care of the dependents. What we also have to remember is that if we take this graph and we start extending it year by year, all those bars continue to go up. So you're going to start seeing more and more people live to an older age as the country progresses. Now take a look at a stage three population pyramid. When we take a look at this one, we see that it's starting to become more rectangular, that the worker cohorts and the children cohorts are leveling off. We're starting to get a wider top. So we're seeing people live to be an older age. We're starting to see that there's workers that can take care of the children and the older group. We're starting to see a lowering birth rate and we're starting to see a lowering death rate and that that graph is starting to even out more and not be so pyramid shape. Now as a country merges into stage four of the demographic transition model, we can see that it really evens out a lot. We have a lot of older people, our middle is starting to widen, and our bottom starts to thin a little bit. But you can see that it's a very proportional shape instead of that really strong pyramid shape that we saw before. Now, in a previous lesson about the demographic transition model, we talked about a phantom stage five or a hypothetical stage five, where we see negative population growth rate. Well, here's a pyramid 
that gives a good example of that, and it's Japan. We can see that it's very narrow at the base and very wide at the top. They're having fewer and fewer children. In fact, they have negative population growth. What that will end up meaning is that we're going to see fewer and fewer workers to be able to take care of the older people. They're going to have fewer and fewer workers for the jobs, and Japan is having that issue. They don't really allow immigration, and they're finding out they have more jobs than they have workers. So they're starting to see some issues with that. They're a great case study to take a look at with what happens in a stage 5 country. Again, we have a very wide top and a very narrow bottom. To wrap up our section on population pyramids, let's go ahead and take a look at this graphic and you're going to see that it has the four basic shapes of population pyramids and some details about each. The big thing to remember about the population pyramid is that the crude birth rate is the most important thing about it. Not the death rate because it doesn't matter whether you died if you haven't been born yet. So we have to take a look at the birth first, then we can see how long people live and that will contribute to the shape of the population pyramid.